Hey y'all, I'm trying to uh, start a new series of videos here, so we'll see how that goes. Um, uh, the series is going to be Access uh, Visual Basic for Applications, uh, Access VBA related items. Um, I've never really been a big fan of queries, so you're not going to see much of that, if at all, in any of these videos. Um, I find them to be a little bit of a clutter. And when you're trying to follow a trail of five, ten, some queries, depending how messy it gets, it gets a little difficult. So um, you're not going to see a whole lot of query stuff here, but if anybody wants, I suppose I can do one with queries and just for an example. But anyway, um, this is all just fake uh, school registration type deal. Um, very low key, nothing special to it, just an example. So I got this form, I created two text boxes, a checkbox, and an accept button. Um, on top of that, we have a table here. I got some fake data in it, just to kind of show you. Text box values, checkbox. So what I'm going to do here, um, I'm actually going to keep this form unbound. And just to go into some basics here, by unbound, I mean that these fields, uh, student name, student grade, are not, or the, these text boxes, sorry, uh, the name and grade are not tied to a field in the table. So these, the text boxes aren't tied to this. I mean, if I wanted them to be bound, I'd go in there and say, okay, the control source, source for student name, um, I got to do the source for the form first. Then I can go in and say, okay, the source for that, student name. I could do that. That would be the simple way if you just wanted to hammer out some entries. But uh, for the sake of this video, I'm not going to do that because I'm going to show record sets for anybody who isn't too familiar with them. So I'm going to keep this unbound as it is. Now I'm going to go in and say, well, first some more basics I name every single field when they come in with the default of text 1, text 2, checkbox 1, command button I don't keep those names so you got student name, grade, transfer check, all that's right here and this is called accept button I keep kind of the control type on the end of all these because that way you differentiate them from any type of a field name so let's say my field here is called student name well this is in this case I could do student name txt it'd be different because I do not like to name my fields or, sorry my controls the same as a field in the table so sorry that's a little more than record sets so let me uh, get on with what I'm trying to do here but I'm going to use record sets to, so let's say I have a couple students I already have in here. Before entering another student into this table, I want to make sure that they're not already there. And so let's say we want to enter one. I'll go into my code first and throw some code in here. Um, I'll go in. We're going to have this code is going to run when the accept button is clicked. So I'm going to declare my variables. Um, this does use um, some SQL, which is the way I prefer to do it compared to uh, queries. Sorry, I can't type and talk at the same time. So I always call my SQL string select SQL because it's a select query, basically VBA style. And then select RS because that is the record set. Watch the record set is the same as a query it's just VBA style and I like to use VBA style because I can use the same exact named record set in SQL string repeatedly so it's not like I have 15 different queries with different names that I'm trying to follow it's one name it's not cluttered and so on so with the uh, variables declared let's get on to the uh, what makes up a record set first thing as I first declared um, is the SQL string so that is basically the same thing as a query does if you were to ever look at the SQL view of a query it says the select 
this from this and criteria if needed. Um, so I guess we'll get right into that. Um, I can remember what all my stuff I need to know is. Um, so we'll go select SQL. The one difference between your query and this is you have to have the quotation marks and commas and all this stuff where you wouldn't necessarily need it in the query SQL. And I capitalize the select and the from and everything just to set it apart from everything else. So what I want to do is I want to say select. I want to select just the student name. I don't really care what grade they're saying he's in or it's going to check to see that he's in. I just want to see if, you know, John Doe has already been entered in. So, I'm going to say select student name from existing students. So, select student name. And here's where it gets tricky. You got to make sure you include a space after your field that you're doing. And I keep my uh, select from and where statements on separate lines just for readability. So you have the ampersand or the and symbol and an underscore. The underscore says this is a line continuation. So from existing students, another space, ampersand, and underscore. And I want to say where student name equals and here's where it gets fancy again this is a text field so student name in the table existing students is a text field so we have to include the single quote or single tick mark or apostrophe whatever you want to call it and then we have to close this double quotes and we'll say ampersand and then I you always use me dot because it gives me a quick selection and it kind of tells me that what I'm using here is some sort of a control on the form so I'll say me dot and it my control that I want to check is name txt and then I have to have another ampersand and I have to close off that first single tick mark we have right here so you can put single tick whatever the name in the box is and I'm just going to close that single tick. So that's your SQL string. From there, I have to say, okay, my record set, set select RS is equal to current DB dot open record set, and then you got to feed it your select uh, your SQL string. What I've seen people do with current DB first they'll have a variable sorry this gets off record sets a little bit but I don't like this so I'm gonna make note we'll say DB string as uh, no has database and they'll say DB string equals current DB and then instead of down here where I use current DB they'll put in DB string. I don't like that because you're declaring another variable that you don't even need to declare because you can just say current DB so it eliminates the need to type any of that. So anyway off track a little bit but uh, anyway back to it so now what I want to do is okay I got my VBA style query or a record set established. I got what it's pulling the table or what field is pulling in the table, the table and what it's checking for in that table. So now what I want to say is if um, select uh, no, nope, sorry, try that again. Say if not select rs dot eof EOF means end of file. If it does not find anything in the table with where that criteria is met, it's going to be end of file, meaning there's nothing that it found. If I say not end of file, that means it found something ma ma yeah, matching that criteria. 
So we'll say if it's not end of file, I'm going to put my if and end if in there right away so I don't forget to close off that end or close off the if. Then I'm going to say, okay, message box, this student already exists. And then I like to always give it a, you know, a little icon to go with it. We'll say VB information, which will just put a little blue box, nothing critical. From there, I always like to put a title too, just so it, you know, more information for the user. And we'll just say exists. So now we'll go in. And we'll test this. Yep, save that. So I'm going to go back to my form. I'm going to run it. I'm going to say, okay, student name is John Doe. Just for the sake, I'll say grade is 9, which I believe is the grade that was in there. So I'm going to say accept. Oh, look, student already exists. So I'll actually uh, run that again and I'll step through the code a little bit so you can see what it's doing. Um, this might be outside of record sets too, so, but long story short, I'll go into this too, maybe in a different video. Right now I put a stop in the code, so when the code runs, it's going to stop at wherever that line is that I just highlighted. So we'll say accept. So what it's doing, it's selecting student name from existing students table where student name equals John Doe. So it's going to go in and of course as we know John Doe is the first entry. So I'm going to continue on here. F8 is line continuation I believe. I do this enough I should know that. Uh, F8 will step through one line at a time. So I'll say okay is this end of file? Did it find nothing? No, it didn't find nothing. So, saying, did not find anything, which is not select rs.uf, give me this message. And that's exactly what it's going to do. Student already exists. And I can do the same. I can come in here and say, alright, I meant Jane Doe. Except, oh, I still got my line break in there. Student already exists. So for every student that already exists, it's just going to keep on popping up. And I'll go uh, make another video to kind of extend upon this with what some of the stuff you can do with that. How you can then enter it into a table after you already did this check. And that's why I have it unbound, is because then I can throw a check in there prior to it trying to enter it into a table. If it was bound, it's getting entered into that table before the check goes in there and then I have to say okay based on this check somebody's already in there go back and then delete it out because they're already there which works just fine I've done it before that way but this is another way to do it so um I'm going to wrap it up with this one and uh, hope you guys learned something I'll work on something else and see where we can go well, thanks for watching guys